freaking touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. There we freaking go. Wait, hold on. They're about to touch. Oh, no, they're not. So happy they didn't touch. But yo, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to another YouTube video. For any of you guys that are new here, my name is Levi. On today's video, I'm going to break down the easiest way, in my opinion, to get shredded. Today's video is going to be a little different than my other informative ones. I feel like this video might come across, I don't know, maybe a little more vulgar, a little more straight to the point, and a little more so like, you know, f your feelings, this is facts. So, you know, stay with me. It's going to be fun. It's going to be enjoyable. So let's get on to it. Now the first opinion that I'm going to tell you guys on what I think it takes to get shredded, lean, whatever you guys want to say, whatever floats your boat, is you need to be eating like a dog. You might be thinking to yourself, Levi, you're not eating like a dog. Those are pancakes. My dog doesn't eat, you know, pancakes. And the thing is, is eating like a dog does not mean to eat exactly like a dog. Eating like a dog essentially means to be eating the same exact thing every single day because when you eat the same exact thing every single day you no longer have to worry about like oh are the calories in this different or the calories in that different and it really just helps more so with you being more consistent with your diet to help you lose weight to help you gain weight whatever it is because in both areas of you know trying to gain weight or lose weight you need to be consistent so in other words eating like a dog does not mean to actually eat like a dog it literally just means do the same thing a dog does every day eat the same thing day in, day out to get consistency and to get results from that consistency. Check this out, see if I can flip it like 5,000 times. Forget I did that. Now if you guys are wondering, these pancakes are like healthy protein pancakes. Like I know I'm talking about food and it can be stupid for me to be like making pancakes and they're super unhealthy and I'm like talking about how to get lean and stuff that would honestly just be the most counterintuitive thing ever. Something I briefly wanted to touch on, which I mentioned right before the whole eating like a dog thing, is the long-term meal prep. And I wanted to give you guys an example of it. So my example is, you know, my bodybuilding prep that some of you guys may have known, may have known, may know, whatever, that I did last year. And so for that bodybuilding prep that I did last year, I wrote myself out a long-term meal plan that had multiple different, you know, meal plans I was to follow throughout the duration of the time that I was on my bodybuilding prep. So essentially for three to four weeks, I started out with a certain meal plan that I was following that had a certain amount of calories I was to eat every single day for those three to four weeks. And then after those three to four weeks, I would cut down the calories and eat another meal plan and eat the same thing every day in that meal plan. And then, you know, three to four weeks later, I'd start another one that had less calories in it and, you know, repeat the cycle until however shredded that, you know, you wanted to get. So for me, I did like three cycles of different meal plans or four, I think it was, for that meal plan for my bodybuilding show. And you want to do the same thing, especially if you're getting lean. Like maybe you don't want to get show lean like I did, but you still kind of have to follow the same pattern. And I always recommend people at the beginning of your long-term meal plans, start at your maintenance calories. And for those who don't know, your maintenance calories is basically what your body, you know, demands of you to basically stay at like a just mean level you will lose some fat there especially if you toss in cardio which we'll talk about later so yeah start there if you guys don't know your maintenance there's a calorie calculator that i'll link down in the description to help you guys find your maintenance but yeah that's it i'm gonna enjoy my pancakes now i eat every single day like a dog all right so i briefly want to show you guys this really quick because some of you guys know i own my own fitness clothing brand called kill Bill, and this is going to be a tank coming for the next drop i believe or no not the next drop but a future drop that i'm working on yes i've worn it a couple times this is a prototype it's a sample that's why it's all wrinkly and one of the things that i did was is i dropped these armholes a couple more inches because i don't want you guys when you wear this when this kind of comes out sometimes on tanks which i hate on other like brands and stuff it kind of comes off and then it looks like all just like there's nothing there, there's nothing filling that space, so then it just hangs there. So I dropped that by two inches so that your body would fill up more of it and give more of an aesthetic appeal. But I do want your guys' feedback really quick because I did leave this design 
I also left this as well. So if there's anything that you guys want to see on this, please let me know down in the comments. Yeah, overall pretty cool, simple tank. I do want to make it like a staple and like the brand, if that makes sense, like it's going to be one of those tanks that's always there. There's also this back logo too as well. Working on that has just been hard, like showing up every single day, getting to work on it and just being consistent, which is like the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about. Instead of talking about it, I figured I would make a skit on it so you guys could get the gist of it. So enjoy. So Doug, anything new? Tell me what's been going on. Well, let's see what happened first. Oh, oh my dog died. And then a couple days ago, my mom actually got hit by a garbage truck and she's still in the ER. And then literally like last night, my girlfriend dumps me because I, I don't know, like something about me not paying attention. I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention. And then all of a sudden I started developing this weird rash on my butt. But yeah, I've, I mean, I guess the one good thing that's been going well now is I started, you know, trying to lose some weight. Hold up, stop right there. What, do, what was that that you said you've been doing? What, you mean like the weight loss? Like that? How long have you been doing this for? I don't know, it's been about two weeks, but ain't nothing happened. I ain't losing no weight around here. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Doug. Would you feel the same way if you took college classes for only two weeks and didn't graduate? Would you feel the same way then? Well, I've never even been to college, but I'm almost sure as hell that it takes longer than two weeks to graduate college. I'm almost sure that takes, you know, tons of time, dedication, you know, hours of studying, all that to even, you know, get even just an associate's. Well, how long does it take to get the ideal weight loss that you want based on science? Now that you say that, I mean, if I were to be honest with you, I was kind of hoping it would take as long as I wanted it to take, but then when I say that, it just sounds goofy. Ah, there you go. Seems like you're starting to pick it up now. Well, that's gonna do it for today, Doug. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. Well, what about my mom and all the other stuff? Get to that next time, right? I gotta go pick up my kid from karaoke classes now, so I got all the time for that. But I did run your insurance just now, and it looks like it's out of date, so that's gonna be $400. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys got the gist of that skit, and I'm pretty sure you guys did, but there's something underlying in that skit that some of you guys may have not have picked up on, and it is to basically, you know, focus on what you can control and forget about what you can't control. In other words, like, you know, what you can control is how consistent you are in your pursuit of those main goals. And I recently heard Alex Ramosi talk about this, and he was essentially saying that, you know, once you set a big goal for yourself, the small steps that you take to getting to that big goal should be the things that you actually focus on. In other words, those should be the day-to-day -day goals that you really focus on, and then the results and the main goal will come without actually kind of trying or in other words like they'll come just through the consistency in other words like what you can control so focus on what you can control you know if you're not losing weight fast or as fast as you think just know that the results will come but you have to trust the process and trust the timing not everything happens on the time frame that we want and i want to throw an example in there because i don't want you guys to think that i don't understand where some of you guys might be coming from so i've been working on youtube now for four years right and I would think, you know, now by four years, I should at least have 100K subs. And that's just not the case. Like, it's not, you know, and I've gotten super mad. I've gotten super upset over it over the course of the years. But I've come to realize, like, that's out of my control. I can't force YouTube to do anything. The only thing that I can do that's in my control is make videos, post them, be consistent with my content, and that's it. Yeah, I'm going to be working on my stuff right now, being consistent. And finishing up this YouTube video that I got to get out tomorrow, which will be Wednesday, May 17th. So yeah, I'll see you guys for that video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.
know, some of you guys are probably wondering where's Rory's YouTube videos been at because sometimes we're suggested after mine. They're just right not here. here anymore. Oh, right. where's that? What's phone. that? On your phone? This is the camera. Yeah, hey, you got to get them uploaded. Dude. People have been waiting. They have them. Yeah. On release, release stuff. Rory just releases and on Monday. Well, they had to decide. We got three sizes or less in most of the colors. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know where Rory also is a clothing brand. I usually put that under his like name on like the lower third with like owner of Elevate GRP. Those just released. That's actually probably my favorite item of yours. But that's gonna bring me to my next suggestion for you guys for getting shredded and you know getting that more tone lean look. And what you're gonna want to do is obviously work out and do some cardio. I'm meshing these two together because they're so similar. So when you're working out, you're putting on muscle, or that is the goal. Muscle actually burns fat and also does raise your calorie intake, which we'll talk about that some other time. Totally like not worth mentioning. I don't even know why I mentioned it, but just know that when you work out in the gym, if you're doing weightlifting, breaking on those fibers and building them back up, you're putting on muscle in place of fat. Make sure that you're getting in the gym. Find a gym program. I have ones linked down in my bio, so if you guys need a gym program to follow, I have them available. I have like them for like five or six bucks. Something really cheap for you guys, very affordable. Also, make sure you're doing your cardio too. Now, how much cardio should you do? I recommend doing at least a few jogs, maybe a week, or maybe you know you do a walk every single day for an hour outside. Honestly, whatever your preferred method of cardio is, and the whole point of doing cardio to get lean is to honestly just increase the deficit that you're currently at. I'm not gonna break this one down too much into detail because it's pretty simplified, it's pretty easy to follow. If you guys have any more questions about lifting or running, just let me know down in the comments and I'll answer it a lot more in depth. Alright, so we are all warmed up, ready to go. We have a run today, just a little two and a half mile run. I haven't got back into anything above two and a half miles yet from post marathon because I'm obviously back to training legs heavy now. Not obviously, but I'm back to training legs like pretty hard now. And so my muscles aren't used to it. So my legs have just been hurting extremely bad. So I don't want to put any more, I would say, wear and tear on them, especially because they're probably still just messed up from the marathon. And then on top of that, the leg training that I've been implementing is just tearing them up so I'm just letting them you know allow to recover come back to how they normally are so I can get you know some more mileage in something I was thinking about right before I was about to go for this run is you know every time I'm about to go for a run there is like this little hesitation there's like this little voice in the back of my head that's like you know like it would be so much nicer if we just didn't have to go for a run you know like wouldn't it be nice just to like chill out maybe like watch an episode of Demon Slayer or something you know right before you go for your run and Anytime that happens, I think to myself, like, I have two options. Either right now I can, you know, let that voice win over me or I can, you know, dig in a little deeper, get some of my willpower and get going on my run. And that's the next tip and suggestion I'm going to give to you guys is that if you're going to be, you know, trying to get lean, you're going to be trying to do whatever it might be, you need to have a little bit of willpower. And, you know, I hear a lot of people on the Internet that do fitness give really good advice. But one piece of advice that I don't really ever hear too often is that, you know, you're held accountable. In other words, you need to dig in a little deeper and get some willpower going to get doing what you want to do. And it's funny that I'm actually talking about this because someone on my YouTube left a comment the other day on how they find it much easier to find motivation to go to the gym rather than to go run, even though they want to start running. And I literally responded with, you know, like, I'm not always motivated to go run. There are days where I don't feel motivated at all to go run, but the feeling of wanting to go for a run and not wanting to go for a run are the same. They are just feelings. I don't rely on my feelings to do an action. I rely on what I have to do. So regardless if I want to go for a run or if I don't want to go for a run, if it's on the menu, I got to do it. And that's how you get results is by consistently doing sometimes what you don't want to do. And that sounded really good. Someone clip that, put it on Instagram as a reel or something. I'm actually probably going to do that, but I got to get going for this run. I'm wasting too much time. My heart rate's actually up from talking so much. So I'll see you guys after the run. We just wrapped up the run, did a little three miler today. I said two and a half, but I made it three. I just felt like I could have went longer. Didn't feel like being a weenie from Weenie Hut Juniors. And yeah, I'm all sweaty. It's a beautiful evening though. Just like the light and everything. Just like look how beautiful the sky is. I'm gonna go shower. I feel gross. It's hot today. It's like 80, so I'm gonna go in and do to do. Same weight as I was just a few days ago. So I'm the same way as I was basically like post marathon, which is like you know, pretty much expected. Like I'm not honestly that surprised that my weight hasn't fluctuated that much to be honest. Anyway, totally, totally 
besides the point. main reason I even just pulled out the scale right now is because I actually wanted to tell you guys my post marathon weight like I don't even know why I brought that up but the main reason I pulled it out is because a lot of the times when people are trying to get shredded or they're trying to lose weight or they're trying to cut down some fat is they're constantly way too obsessed with the scale or the way the mirror is looking. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've talked to people over and over again. I hear the same response every time they're trying to lose weight. Oh man, the scale just looks the same. Or every time I look in the mirror, man, I just, I don't see any differences. And it's, it's discouraging for me to hear because I know that person probably hasn't been trusting the process for long enough. And this kind of all goes back to what I said in the beginning with what Alex Ramosi said. He said that you need to be fixated on the little goals that are going to help you to achieve your overall main goal. So for example, with the kind of scenario that we're talking about right now, if you want to be shredded, the main goal for you right now should be what's more present rather than what's in the future. So in other words, like your main goals right now should be, you know, to eat the same thing consistent, consistent, <laughs> consistently day in and day out. That should be the main goal because eventually you know you're gonna to get to that other goal if you just follow the goals that you have set for the day. And I think that model is so important that Alex Hermosi drew up because what it literally does is it eliminates doubt, believe it or not, and here is why it eliminates doubt. So essentially every single time that you continue to check the mirror or you check the scale just to upset yourself, you are literally manifesting doubt into your mind. How do I know this? Because in my therapy for obsessive compulsive disorder, any time that I have a thought and I go to check it and I go to ruminate on it and I start to like, you know, go back and check and check and check because checking is actually a compulsion. I'm literally telling my brain that I don't trust my own self or trust what I'm doing. And it's the same freaking thing with checking the mirror and checking the scale. It is literally the same thing and totally two different situations. So yes, there is a psychology to it, and I think it is, if not one of the most detrimental things that you can do to yourself if you're trying to lose weight or get cut, so do not do it. Stop checking the scale in the mirror. It's crazy because like, this was something that messed with me so much when I was trying to lose weight and get abs for the first time, and I just, I know how much mentally it can literally mess with you. That's a wrap. Those are the five things I think you guys need to really focus on if you guys are trying to get shredded. I know today's video was pretty like, I would say brutal. It was pretty brutally honest as I should say. And I meant for it to be that way. And I hope you guys liked it that way. But that is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, be sure to give it a like. If any of you guys are new here, do not forget to press that subscribe button because you guys know I will be back. And as always, die trying to do up the sky's limit. I'll see y'all in the next one. We'll